Hello, welcome to my video on using Refinitiv's Ecom for data stream. My name is Auke Blomminga and I'm coordinator of a couple of thesis courses at the University of Groningen. <coughs> and this video is mainly intended for people, uh, students uh, in uh, one of my thesis courses. If anybody else can use it, that's fine too. Let's move on. What am I going to do today? Well, this video is, ex uh, is intended for those of you who want to collect the same data for a list of firms. So, for instance, you want to study the oil industry and you want returns for different oil firms over the same period of time. Suppose over the last 20 years you want to have monthly stock returns for Shell, Exxon, BP and Total. Um, then there are several options available and uh, you can, of course, select them one by one. But the nice thing of Econ and also of DataStream is that you can do a search like this with a list of identifiers. And if you use this list of identifiers, it gets very easy because then you do one time, you have to formulate this, the retrieve command for instance for the stock returns and then automatically you get all the required data. Typically these identifiers are things like QSIPs uh, which are used in the US, ticker symbols which are used by the stock market or ISIN codes which is an international uh, standard for identification numbers. Uh, ISINs are particularly useful for international data sets and you know we will uh, typically study a lot of European data so for this reason in this example I will use ISIN codes. And the general approach is a two-step one. First try to get a list of firms and their identifiers the ISINs and second use this list of ISINs for starting the process of getting a lot of data in one step. Well, how to get this list of identifiers? It depends very much, of course, on the type of research you're doing. Of course, for some questions, you can do it easily using Econ. So you could, for instance, um, find a list of oil, all oil firms in Econ and automatically get the ISIN codes from them. So that would be easy in that case. But it might also be that you are studying a particular event, like for instance the change of a CEO in a firm, and you do that from a list uh, that you saw in the newspaper, and in that case you have to figure out one by one the name of the firm and the corresponding ISIN. Uh, so you would do it then manually by searching the internet. And it's also possible that your source of data is actually an outside source, let's say Zephyr, for studies of M&As. And you would have an acquiring firm, which is listed, and you would have from the database an ISIN code for that firm. Then, of course, this list that you get from Zephyr can be used in Econ to start the whole process. Well, in the remaining part of this video, I'm going to show you briefly how to start Econ from within uh, the University of Groningen context. I'm going to show you how to get ISIN codes from Econ. And finally, I'm going to show you how to get returns from Econ. So now we need to collect ISIN codes and ISIN codes can be obtained from many different places. It also depends a lot on the study. Sometimes you start with MNAs and you already have the ISIN codes from, let's say, an MNA database, or you may have actually worked through another ticker symbol like QSIPs or whatever. ISIN codes are one of the many ticker symbols, so you can uh, choose those um, here. I will use them. And you know, um, I will show you how to get them from Econ. And so we need to press this build formula button over here. And that opens this box here where you can select here instruments and here data items. These are the most important fields. And then quite often we need to do tricks here with the parameters and quick functions. So instruments, so we're looking at for Shell, 
for instance, let's take some own firms. So we can type in the name of Xiao. Well, let's also collect information on Exxon. Uh, BP, the British oil firm. Well, what's what else is there? The French one, Total. Why not? And then we want to know the ISIN code. And you can see here, the ISIN code here is on top of the list. But if you really want to look at here, you find a list of all the potential different things you can look for. Here is the references and identifiers. So you can see here, you can look for Q-SIPs, ISIN, C-DOLs. Well, a lot of stuff. Anyway, um, we are looking for ISINs. So we are going to select the ISINs. We press here the add button and then we have to wait. The system is a bit slow today. And we find here the selected item. And then we press insert. And here we find the ISINs. The formatting is a bit weird. I don't know why it happens like this, you know. Uh, we can change that. So you can change the layout of the output by clicking on this button here, layout. So now we have the date on the column headers and that's the reason why it looks so odd. If you put it here, you can see the table looks like this. So I fixed this and this looks much better. So this is how to arrive at ISIN codes. So, as a next step, I want to collect some information about these firms. And in particular, I'm going to collect some returns. And so I have a list of ISINs. In this case, I got them also through Econ, but I might as well get them from somewhere else. So, starting with this, again, I'm not going to type here something but I'm going to use this one, References a Cell. And now I can select this range of ISIN codes. If I want, I can also identify here that we are using ISIN codes. Select. And next I can select a data item that's going to happen in this box. So a popular data item will be Total Returns. So let's collect total returns. Here we have it. You can see I get it. I can now also say something about the data. So I could collect a time series. So let's, from a specific date, I could choose that one. So select the date. Maybe I want to have it from, you know, the 1st of October to, well, why not? Um, the 1st of March. And I want to have it on a daily basis. And I now can also change the formatting. So I could say here, you know, do I want to have the dates in the column headings? Yes, that seems like fine. Or do I want to have them in the row headings? If I change it to here, this is sometimes convenient. If you use like a program that's kind of using this data format style, so you have here the data, the date and the ISIN code, and here the value, you will have like uh, 631 data points for this thing. Apparently there's so many returns for a particular date and firm. This data beta level forward, that may be useful when you are going to use Stata and use the panel option there. If you're going to use Excel and want to have it in a nice format in Excel, I think, you know, this format may work better. And, you know, sometimes it is a bit disorganized, so you may want to do the sorting order on the date. So sort it on date. from low to high. 
So we get the first date and the last date. I press OK, insert, and you can see that I now have a lot of returns for each day, for each film. And this is probably the way that works. You can, of course, also reverse, you know, columns and, and rows if you want, but there's a lot of options here. Uh, you can also see the impact of systematic risk. Huh? So you see all oil stocks have a negative return on the 1st of October. Almost all of them have a positive one on the 5th, etc. Et anyway, so this is the way to do it.